Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MC Eternal. How are you guys doing today? How's life? It's boring, I know. Will my pink dress make it less boring? Yeah, I know, it doesn't. I was just reading the comments on the previous episode and it seems that I can do something really good. Uh, the thing is, you might notice that we do not have a wireless crafting terminal and the reason for that is because the booster cards uh, yes, these guys. And unfortunately, in this mod pack, unlike Project Ozone, they get consumed. So you actually have to craft them or get them from Enderman. We don't have that much, so I was like, eh, there's no point of getting that. But it seems I can buy this. Really? You're creative? Oh, it's not linked. Okay, now it's synced. Do you work? <gasps> Do you need RF? <gasps> this is so nice. And it wasn't even that expensive, it was 25,000 coins. It's not that bad. This is so good and I have no idea how to thank you because uh, technically, I would have never noticed that. Ever. But talking about shopping and money, I did see something on MC Eternal Reddit today and we're going to exploit it and get filthy rich. And we don't need diamonds anymore because we have something better. Do you know what this is? It's called a dragon egg and it is a very rare drop from female dragons if you kill them, so it's not a very farmable item. But if you have extra, you can sell it in the shop. How do we farm them? Well, apparently, if you put it in the fire, you can capture it in a mob imprisonment tool. There you go. And it actually gets much better because you can put it in a mob duplicator and actually spawn it. Look, it falls down. If it falls down, it will break and you get the item and we can sell it. Southwest, this is Southwest. We fire. This is actually the only region which is not synchronized perfectly because I didn't know where they're going to spawn. So we're going to miss. Because I thought they spawn here. Anyhow, this stupid guy is still making dragon eggs. Holy. Uh, and you guys probably get the idea. We're going to have a spawner in order to spawn dragon eggs. Oh, this is nice. This is very nice. The only problem is that it really doesn't do that much damage. Otherwise, it's really cool. Alright guys, I think we have everything we're going to need in order to set up the farm and I have also prepared a very small area. I wanted to go fancy, but I want to make money really fast. But let us go through how the mob duplicator from Industrial Foregoing actually works. I had to do a little bit of research for Project Ozone because we needed a lot of animated mobs, but um, yeah, unfortunately that's not gonna happen anytime soon. But the way that this guy is going to work is that this is its working area, which uh, without any range upgrade, it's just this. It's going to continuously spawn mobs until there are 32 mobs within its working area and then it will stop working. So the sooner you get the mobs out of that working area, the more mobs you will have. And this is the maximum range upgrade that this guy will accept. We are under attack again, come on. <laughs> I'm out of osmium. Okay, this time we are going to wait a little bit. Maybe they will be out of the river, we will see. Oh, they are out of the river. Most of them anyways. Where are the missiles? I waited too long. Come back here. Haha. <laughs> Anyway, the maximum range upgrade that you can add to a mob duplicator is plus 5, so it will work in an 11 by 11 area. And the good thing about farming dragon eggs, which I don't have it in my inventory, is that whenever it spawns, it will just drop down and it's no longer a mob. So it will work super fast. I made this explanation because some of you guys were suggesting that the most efficient way of setting up a mob duplicator is to put more energy upgrades rather than speed upgrades. So let us try this. I'm going to put the range add-on of 3 and we will see. You see? We're getting one cow, three cows, four. Anyway, that is the speed. I killed two of you. Sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, if we go back to plus five, look how fast it's going to work. You see, we got six. And I, I can't even count. So basically what I'm trying to say is that if you want a mob duplicator to work at maximum efficiency, you need to put the maximum range upgrade, which is plus five, you're going to need both of the speed upgrades and yes, you have one slot left so you might as well put an energy upgrade. And that's it. And of course you have to remove the mobs from its working area as soon as possible. So what we're going to do is to have a flux point, an ender tank with essence, power and fluid conduit. Then we add the mob duplicator, which for some reason it's glitched out. Okay, it's fine. Then we put the range, the speed upgrades, 
and the energy upgrade. We're going to have our vacuum hopper over here and we're going to give it a filter for dragon eggs and the range is perfect. Then we are going to use ultimate logistical transporters for mechanism because they are literally the fastest thing ever to export items into this guy. And then we just set it to dragon eggs. And funny thing, I never made a configurator. <laughs> now I have to charge it. We put you on extract. Perfect. So if we put our mob imprisonment tool inside, we should get a lot of dragon eggs. Ooh, it's not tall enough. Unfortunately, I forgot to mention that you have to drop them by six blocks. Otherwise they will not break. Now they will. And we're gaining coins. And unfortunately, this is working too fast. Uh, how do we make it better? You know, at first I was thinking maybe we should not go too crazy, but then I was like, eh, <laughs> we should. So instead of having one vacuum hopper, we're going to have four and each of them are hooked up to several item conduits. And this time it's going to keep up. Let us check and we run. We don't have to run, but you know, I don't want to pick up the eggs. And this is how fast we're gaining coins. It's good. And I'm filthy rich, just from testing. By the way, I do realize that we have advanced item collectors, but you cannot connect it to the screen. And this is why we have to use this. I did not have a better solution. Well, so far so good, everything seems to be keeping up. I'm happy. And we just hit 1 million coins. Of course, I still have to decorate this place, put a lever so that we can turn it off, and then we're done. But we are filthy rich, and I can go back to my hobby. Oh, we got something. Oh, it wasn't that important. Okay. <laughs> I'm pooping coins. <laughs> okay. So there is a quest in the challenge section which is called the millionaire and we have to hand in over three and a half million coins. So let's do that and claim the rewards. Gives you more money. That's not very good. But it gave us the nether star seed. That is good. Oh, there's more. What? The billionaire. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. What? Okay. That is interesting. This is nicer, powering the entire planet. We have to provide it with... Oh, it's not gonna happen, okay. Fine, and our loot chest gave us a nether star. Nice. I just noticed that there is something offered in the shop, which is from Bewitchment, and it's called Box of Sealed Evil. So I think it's like Pandora's box and we should not open it. I bought three of them. Let us see what it does. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's really not good. You're not that bad, are you? Okay, that was easy. Maybe I should do it further away from the base. I'm not sure. What if there's a supernova inside? Nothing, really nothing. Poison for a minute and weakness for 20 minutes. Oh, and a bunch of garbage. So I'm guessing see you in 20 minutes. Cause this is slightly irritating. Before we continue with the rest of the episode, there are a few points that I would like to make. Some of you guys were worried about the taint. Yes, you should be worried because it's growing. A lot. But the tainted soil will go away once we get rid of the taint seed. And the taint seed will no longer spawn if we get rid of the rift. And we can get rid of the rift by using a causality collapser, which we already did in order to get primordial pearls. So it's not going to be a huge deal. Even if everything fails, I got the flux sponge from a loot bag. So we can just close down any rift and remove any flux. And generally, yes, I'm still pretty insane because my permanent warp is too much but there's not much i can do about it until i get a warp effect because the best way of removing permanent warp is that you use the soap in the bath whenever you're under warp effect also i did make a small area for our dragon egg spawner and it's nothing very fancy but it will do we have a lever so that we would be able to spawn them and stop them from being spawned and unfortunately i also opened up two stacks of loot bags and here is the result it's pretty crazy we are going to go through some of them today for instance we got a hydra so maybe this time we will get a skull. Oh, that's the wrong Hydra. Damn. Okay. You lost the head. Nice. Well, you just ruined my arena, but okay. <laughs> to be honest with you, I actually thought that it's going to be the Hydra from Ice and Fire, not the one from Twilight Forest. Another important news is that we have a new boy. Because unfortunately my previous boy is kind of broken and we cannot write him anymore. But if you spawn a new dragon using your dragon eggs, you can write them. Like so. And a few episodes ago that I got my first dragon, one of you guys suggested that we should call him Firebeard. I like that name. So he's Firebeard. In other news, one of the loot bags gave me a white dragon egg. Ooh. So we're actually going to have a new dragon which is going to be white. While this guy hatches, I go make some food. We need a lot of bones. Oh my goodness. And some pork. And I think that's plenty. I am telling you, they spawn a lot. And nobody believes me. Why did I hear a dragon? Did you hatch? 
When? Oh, he did hatch. Where are you? Don't tell me that I got a white dragon and it suffocated to death. <laughs> oh, it's here. Uh, come on. On my shoulder. We go out. And it's a boy. Yes. You don't move. I don't think we have enough food. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. Actually, it was. We only have eight left. Why are you sleeping? Oh, it's night time. Okay. He's sleeping. So cute. And obviously, I'm open to any name suggestions. Just don't call him Snow White. That's weird. For landing purposes, I'm actually thinking we are going to need a dragon pad. You know, like a helipad. In any case, now that we have an ice dragon forge and we have an ice dragon, we're going to make ice dragon steel. Ooh. We don't have that much. We can only make 40. But I think that should be enough. Are you gonna do that? No. Is this the wrong configuration? No. I had to put him down again. Now it's fine. Don't kill my raven. While he's doing his job, I want to try something. Mana tide bellows. Apparently, if you put it next to a mana pool, it should work faster. If I drop my ring, you should fill in much faster. Oh yeah. That made a huge difference. <laughs> okay, but it was actually pretty empty, so they spawned again. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm actually going to use these mana tide bellows all the time because they are amazing. Wait a minute, there has been an update. What? Well, it seems that after the previous updates, there has been a few changes. I have to upgrade you? Why? It does not require anything. I can use my sword. That is weird. So if you hold shift, it will tell you that you are going to require magic level 15. It's not very difficult to achieve, but I'm just confused. And if you right click on a crafting table with your ingots, it will not let you. But if you do this and then put it, you can just craft the helmet. But just in case, we will upgrade it anyway. So now I can use it. Okay, fine. Minus the raven on my head, this armor also looks cool. I see you. I was about to say that now that we have a brand new shiny armor and you can see my beautiful face again, maybe we should spend some time on Bewitchment. We have not played with this mod for a while and the reason for that is very simple. It's just behind me because we made the wizard tower and I just left everything in a box. We need to unpack. And of course our armor has the usual stuff. Protection 8, Unbreaking 6 and the sword also has Looting 6, Sharpness 10, Sweeping Edge 6 and Mending and XP boost. You can double that one as well. I did not expect that. And for those of you who don't know, you can actually use a cardboard box in order to move chests. And for those of you who knew, hi. And we just unpack here. Well, I would say now that the walls are gone, it looks slightly less garbage. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, we have a troll. Anyhow, we need to think of a roof. Yeah, that looks slightly weird. Maybe I should switch this with the wood. But the thing is, I actually like the wood. Huh. We'll leave it for now. I'm not sure, maybe if we add more details to it, it will look nicer. You know, I'm just not a builder. We should make our peace with it. It's gonna look awesome and it's the best I can do. I also got two statues from a reward bag and we're going to put them here. But that's actually nice. And if I remember correctly, I was also making some night ore. Which is gone. <laughs> oh, we have them here. Okay, cool. Well, it's taking shape. Uh, let me do some details, then I'll be right back. We first have to get rid of these guys. Wrong spell. I meant this one. Yeah, for the moment, I think it's fine. And I notice what's wrong with this building. The thing is, the darker color should have been the dome, not the pillars. But we can make changes after we have played with the mod and we know how everything is going to look like. The thing is, I don't know much about bewitchment, so let us start with the things that I know. We're going to start with the altar. So depending on how many crops and leaves and trees and flowers we have around this altar, it will generate magical energy, which is our mana. So right now it's 14 and I'm guessing it's these few flowers over here. But if I add one leaf over here, you should go higher. Yes, now it's 15. According to the wiki, the altar has 32 block range in order to detect the flowers and gain magical energy. But it's not centered in that square it's slightly unbalanced. For instance, towards the north side, you only have eight blocks detection range, and towards the south, you have 20. And towards the southeast, you have the most. So if we want to plant any trees, it has to be over there. If we want to have rituals, it has to be over here. That's based on my compass, because that is north. Magical energy is how we will operate the machines and how we will power the rituals. So we need to have modifiers in order for this guy to charge faster. And I think one of them is skull. Yeah, it's now multiplied by two. It's not the best. Also, if some of you guys are experts in bewitchment, please correct me, because I'm actually telling you my understandings of the mod. So basically, according to the wiki, a leaf will give you one magical energy 
Grass will give you one. A flower will give you one. A two tall flower will give you two. A tree will give you something between 20 and 50, which I think is dependent on the size. So based on my understanding, if you occupy one block, you will get one magical energy. A tree will give you 50 because it occupies 50 blocks. So my plan is that we're going to spam down here with leaves. Yes, I added 7 leaves and now we are at 21. Good. It's slightly buggy so every time you actually have to break it and put it back so that it will update. There was a flower forest over there so I just went there and brought a bunch of flowers. I planted one tree, I spammed more leaves and I also planted a tree from Bewitchment itself which is called Dragon Blood. And now we are at 231. I right clicked with a nugget, sorry. And also the dragon head is far better than a skull. And you can also put a lit candle. But another modifier that we can make is the goblet and we have to fill it in. So we need to set up the cauldron one more time. You know, I made the floor out of wood and I was not thinking that we we're going to need a cauldron. Will you burn? Probably. No, it doesn't burn. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. But I'm guessing we should first try if it works with a night orb from Tomcraft. Will you boil? Oh yeah, it does. Okay, <laughs> that was nice. We don't need fire anymore. We can just use a night orb, which is over here. So I'm guessing if a night orb works, we can also fill it in with an everfull urn. One of the ingredients of the goblet is cloudy oil. And for those of you who don't remember, the way that we get it is through the witch's oven. And apparently we just have to put a cactus with some empty jars. And there's a chance that you will get it because now we got cactus green. But this time we got it. So if I'm not wrong, we need to drop the oil, a gas tear, three redstone, and the goblet. That was probably wrong. I'm just saying that the instructions seems to be unclear. So this time we're just going to right click with the goblet. Maybe it will work. No. Do I have to throw it? Huh. <laughs> After trying it 10 times, I did finally manage to fill in the goblet. The thing is, your altar has to have 500 magical energy and it's not documented anywhere. I read the book, it's not here. I read the wiki, it's not there. And I don't know, I just found it on Reddit. So yeah, so if we put you here, you should be better. Yeah, now it's 600. Good, and your goblet emits a redstone signal because his jaw is moving. So I don't think my structure will actually work. You have to literally do it in a forest or otherwise I just have to spam trees everywhere. It seems another modifier that we can add to the altar is flying ointment. Uh -huh. I'm running out of space. We put you here. Are you better? You're actually worse. Yeah, without that, it's actually better. Not by much, but it's better. Also, the Everfull Urn is not filling this guy automatically, which is weird. Another item that seems to be very important in this mod is called Cold Iron Ingot, and you get it from a bottled frost fire, which you get it from a perpetual ice. And I was just doing some research, and it seems that we're going to need to make a potion of ice world. So again, if I'm not wrong, we're going to need the mandrake seeds, one piece of snow, and then just right click. Yes, we have it. Good. Can I have another one? Ooh. Oh, I can have three. That's nice, which I just realized it's wrong because I needed to add gunpowder because the thing is we actually need to throw it. So again, one mandrake root, snow, gunpowder, and I forgot bottles. Yes, we got it. We have to throw it at stone and we should get perpetual ice. Oh, we did. Okay, that was easy. Can I still touch you? Yes, you can actually get it, but the thing is you get extra bits from another mod, but it's fine. Okay, now that we have the perpetual ice, I need to make the bottled frost fire. Okay, let me get the materials and I'll be right back. Actually, this is proving to be slightly more difficult than I thought because in order to make the bottled frost fire, we're going to need something called a white sage. And apparently you get it from dead bushes. Nope, 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 nope. Are you ready? Oh, we got it. Cool. I'm guessing we can grow you and get more seeds, hopefully. Yes, we do. So we have everything we're going to need and we should be able to make two bottles of frost fire. I hope. I really do. Yes, we have it. Well, I did mine a few bits of iron ore and we are going to try it over here because apparently it does burn and it really doesn't help if it's raining, I guess. Uh, let's go over there. Yeah, we do it here. It's not raining. So we throw you on the ground and then we throw you. Yes. We have it. Just out of curiosity, can I pick you up? Ooh. Okay, that's actually really good because we don't have to do it over there. We can do it over here. There is another type of fire which is called Hellfire and it seems you use it in order to make the different types of statues. I don't know what they're used for, but uh, it looks nice. Ooh, this is nice. Can I make this? 
Oh yeah, I can. I did make the pentacle, but it seems that we already have enough modifiers that the pentacle itself is not very efficient. So right now we have a multiplier of 8, and if I add the pentacle, it's 5. So we're not gonna use it. It just looks cool. Anyway, I also made a cold iron sword, and apparently that's more effective than a diamond sword. So now we are at 650. It's not the worst. I was also thinking that now that we have some problems with magical energy, we might as well try to mix and match some of the mods. So we have the groove stone from Root, and if we put it here and activate it, it will grow a lot of grass and different types of fern for us, automatically. And we're gaining some magical energy, which is good. So maybe later on, we're going to have two different altars. One of them will be here because I made this structure and I don't want to rip it apart. And we're going to use it for brewing and crafting and so on and so forth. And then another one for rituals, which are going to require more magical energy over there and we're going to surround it with a lot of trees grass flowers and so on and so forth well enough of bewitchment today maybe next episode we will get into rituals after i learned a bit more but the thing is i also got some mobs from the loot bags so i was thinking we try them and see what they do giant tentacle what do you do uh hi i honestly did not know that this thing exists can we kill it and that was a boss, because it gave me an epic shader. Huh, there's also something called a bicoke. What do you do? Oh, okay. Hi, hi. That's a primordial pearl! Go away! Can I get that? Yes! Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's an intact one. I wish I would have captured him in a mob imprisonment tool, because uh, these are good. <laughs> Another mob that I got is called a phoenix. Are you good? Are you bad? Are you friendly? You flaming buffoon. I'm immune to fire. Another guy that I found is called Ratlantian Automaton. Are you automated rat? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You're not very kind. Is he my friend? Because he's not shooting me. That's actually not very good because he's destroying everything. And he does not take that much damage. Ooh. That is bad. He does so much damage. <laughs> Why do you have so much health? He's dead. Ancient saw blade. Huh. An arcane technology. I have no idea what this does. You can use it for the power armor. That's nice. So now that we have a phoenix, let us see what it does. Or what it drops. So do you drop anything or no? It doesn't seem so. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode before I blow up my base. I will also try to include a link to the reddit post that I found about the dragon egg in the description so that if you want to see the original farm, you can do that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.